Adabox 10. Rainbow Trellis. This Adabox is a multi-sensory feast. Lights, sound, squishy buttons. This box comes with a Trellis M4. It's a grid of 4x8 silicone buttons with a NeoPixel behind each one for rainbow glory. The engine is an AtSamD51 microcontroller with stereo audio channels and microphone input. Trellis is an all-in-one synthesizer, drum machine, MIDI sequencer, audio filter, sampler, a DIY toy that will help you make any sort of music you'd like, so you can make the bleepy bloops all winter long. Thanks to the generous sponsorship and support from Analog Devices and DigiKey, we've even included a fancy triple-axis accelerometer. Each Trellis M4 comes with an ADXL 343 built right in, so your lights and music can react to movement and tilt. Adabox 10, Rainbow Trellis. Hello and welcome to the Adabox 10 unboxing. I'm John Park for Adafruit Industries. First of all, I wanna thank you for coming by for the unboxing. If you're a subscriber, then hopefully you've gotten your box in the mail by now. If you're not a subscriber, you should go ahead and subscribe to Adabox 11. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it. Now, this Adabox is all about colorful lights and fun sounds. We call it Adabox 10, Rainbow Trellis. Let's have a look inside the box. First of all, I'm going to remove the colorful slip sheet. This has a description of Adabox 10, as well as the content list and some links to the guides that we have that'll get you started building projects with Adabox 10. There's also a link to the coupon code so that you can get 10% off your next order at Adafruit. Let's not wait any longer. Let's take a look inside Adabox 10. Opening the tissue paper, we get to the star of Adabox 10. This is the Trellis M4. I am really excited about this board. It is a AtSamD51 Cortex M4 based microcontroller. And as you can see here, it has a 32 NeoPixel and button grid. And flipping it over, we see the beautiful silk screen on the back. This is a little shout out here we have to Analog Devices and to DigiKey. Thanks to their generosity, we were able to put on the Analog Devices ADXL343 accelerometer, which means in our programs we can measure tilt and shake. Now speaking of programs, the Trellis M4 can be programmed in Arduino as well as CircuitPython, and we have libraries to make that easy. Lots of example code and many projects have already been made with this wonderful board. Now I'm gonna set this here for a second and we'll take a look at the enclosure. So this is a laser cut enclosure and right now it has its protective paper on. We'll take that off later and have a look at how to assemble. And we've also got some hardware to put that together. And we have the elastomer silicone buttons. So these actually allow the colored light to diffuse through and you can press the buttons to activate things in your project. Now, if we look at the Trellis M4 and its connectors, we have a USB connector on there used for power and data. We also have our Stemma connector. This is a four JST PH connector that is used to extend the project to other circuits. Uh, for example, we have a project where we can communicate with classic MIDI synthesizers and drum machines using the UART coming off of our Stemma to connect into classic MIDI. We also have a TRRS headphone jack, which can be used with earbuds that have a microphone on them. So we can send audio out over this port to things like powered speakers or amplifiers, or we can plug in headphones and listen, and we can record using the little earbud microphone right onto our projects. Now talking about those connectors, we have 
a USB cable, this really cool metallic USB cable. Yours might be a different shade of metallic. We have a few different ones. We've also got this stereo cable, and you can use this to plug in your powered speakers or amplifier into the Trellis M4. And next we have a set of earbuds. So these are your typical phone earbuds that have the TRRS plug on them. And there's also some little additional earpieces for it. This has the microphone built right on to the cable so that we can record as well as listen. And we have some of these Stemma to header cable sets. We've got a male and female side, so you can plug these into breadboards or plug components directly into them. And you get two of them. Those both can plug into the Stemma connector on the Trellis M4. We've also got this nifty little stand. This is a typical sort of tablet stand that you can use to prop up your board. You might want to set it next to your computer and look at the lights if you're using it as a type of display, or maybe it could be an HID USB button box and you want to rest it there so that you can see it. And now we come to a little set of components in this pack. I'm just going to shake those out. Uh, first thing we have is a little set of rubber feet to place on the bottom of your case so that it won't slide around. And we have this little TRS breakout adapter, and this allows you to plug into something like one of these stereo cables, and then we can connect up to the left and right and ground channels to break out to other projects. And in fact, we'll use that on the classic MIDI project. And we've also got a little 10K potentiometer that you can use to control things in code. You can plug those into your Stemma connector if you want. We've also got a couple of electrolytic capacitors. These are 10 microfarad and these 10K resistors. And again, you'll use those to do things like filter audio. Now we get to our bonus items. We have stickers. Now your stickers may vary from the ones I have here, but I've got a nice set of these rainbow stickers. These are really cool and you can place these on your helmet, your fishing rod, an oar, a laptop, a lunchbox, whatever you like. And they are super shiny and reflective. And lastly, we have this really cool little prism. And you can use this to bend light. It's beautiful. You could place it on top of some of the lit buttons on your Trellis M4 if you like, or just set it on your desk because it is cool looking, especially when sunlight comes streaming through it. Okay, so that is what comes in the box. And what I'd like to do next is put together the trellis into its enclosure so that we can see what it looks like. So this is what the acrylic pieces look like with their protective coating on. You're gonna wanna peel off that paper I've already done that to another set, cook and show style. So here we can see this is the top piece and then we have a little holder, spacer and the back piece of the enclosure. So what we're gonna do is take our silicone rubber button pads and we're gonna place these in here like this. The important thing is to have this little set of pairs that are keyed to go into the holes on the trellis going horizontally, not vertically. So you can see if we set it like this, these little pairs are horizontal and they'll line up with the board. So now what we're gonna do is set the board down and try to get it into those little rubber pads there and then it's a nice fit. Okay, next we're going to place on this little spacer here just keeps it from sliding side to side. And next goes this, and finally our back piece. Okay, that looks good. You might wanna blow off any dust that you have in there if that's gonna bug you watching that forever trapped inside. Uh, and now what I'm gonna do is use the little 
screws and nuts to fasten that. So I'll just push one up through from the top to the back side and then screw on that little nut. And you can just use your fingers. You actually don't even really need tools for this because it's pretty easy. It doesn't have to go on crazy tight. And then I just like to go around the board, screwing these in like so. And there we have the last screw in place. And there is our assembled trellis. Now you can also take these little rubber feet and place them on the back there. You just wanna make sure you don't cover the hole where the little reset button is. And if you have some favorite pieces of artwork on there, don't cover those either. Okay, and so that is our assembled Trellis M4. Now that we've got the Trellis M4 put together, I thought it would be fun to go ahead and plug it in. So I've got my USB cable. I'm gonna use that for power. And I'm gonna get this stereo cable because the Trellis M4 that came in your Adabox has a default software programmed right onto it. So what I'm gonna do is plug in my audio to my powered speaker extension and go ahead and plug in the jack to the Trellis M4. And now I'm gonna do a little mobile battery magic to plug in the Trellis. You can plug it into a computer or a hub or a little mobile phone charger can plug it into pretty much any USB outlet. And now when we plug this in, we're gonna get a little welcome message. Welcome to Adabox 10, brought to you by DigiKey, Analog Devices, and Adafruit. And we also have this little step sequencer built right into it. So if we sample some sounds, wherever we place them on the grid, they're gonna play back. That's a lot of cowbell. And we can use the accelerometer to increase or decrease the speed. All right, so that is a really cool demo of just some of the kinds of things that you can do with the input, the colored lights, the buttons, and sound. We're even able to mix sound, as you can see. And this program was all created in CircuitPython. So let's take one last look at the parts that came in Adabox 10, a quick little recap. We have, of course, our Trellis M4, as well as the enclosure and the elastomer button pads and our little rubber feet on there. We've got our USB cable as well as our stereo audio cable. I've also got the little stand that you can use to prop up your trellis if you like. We've got our Stemma connectors to plug into the Stemma connection and then out to breadboard and component. A little set of earbuds with the microphone built on. Got some cool sticker cards. Let's not forget about the most excellent prism. And then I have the little component pack here, which is our headphone breakout, as well as the potentiometer, the resistors, and the capacitors. So this is the fixings for making all kinds of exciting sound and light-based projects, as well as a host of all kinds of other creative things. I hope you've enjoyed this unboxing part of the unboxing. And next, we're gonna have a look at some of the projects, as well as the learn guides. For Adafruit Industries, I'm John Park, and this has been the Adabox 10 Unboxing.
Hey, but wait, there's more. Yeah, that's me live. Hello, that was recorded to live, as you may have guessed. I'm John Park, and this is the continuation of the Ada Box 10 unboxing. Uh, I am so glad you guys came to check out the unboxing. Hopefully you're playing along with uh, yours at home. Maybe you've gotten yours a little while ago and you're up and running with some cool demos. Um, and hey, speaking of demos, I actually wanted to uh, show you some demos of these uh, projects in action, just a few of them. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna head over to the uh, workbench over here and check out this one. This one's been really popular. This is the Christmas tree soundboard, the uh, Christmas soundboard. It's actually a holiday soundboard. We've also got a Hanukkah sound or two on there. Uh, and so I'm gonna run over here. I know these lights are kind of blown out on here, unfortunately, they're much more saturated in real life. Um, but this little beauty, I've got it plugged into a little powered amplifier. So hopefully you'll be able to hear it. And uh, what this does is I'm gonna, wow, that's loud. Turn these down a little bit. Little ice skating sounds. Church bells. Merry Christmas. So uh, this is written in CircuitPython and it shows you some of the power of being able to mix audio and uh, playback samples very quickly, very easily on the board. Uh, now, speaking of playing back sounds, let me zoom this little overhead camera out a bit. Sorry for the seasickness for a second. Um, a bunch of the pro projects that we've done have involved MIDI. And if you're not familiar with MIDI, it's a way that a lot of uh, music controllers talk to things like synthesizers. So we've got uh, some that will talk to software synthesizers and we've got ones that will talk to hardware synthesizers. Here is a little example of a little bits synthesizer. So you may be familiar with these uh, little bits or little snap together electronic components. And uh, the uh, synthesizer kit comes with this little micro keyboard. Um, but what I decided to do here was juice it up a little bit and build a, a multi-oscillator synthesizer and use our classic UART MIDI project to talk to this synth. So there's a little bit that will read in classic MIDI. And I've got a little cable here I built. This is one of our um, Stemma to uh, male connectors going in through our little uh, phono adapter and then running over the TRS cable. So let's, let's start this up. And I'm gonna turn this down a little bit. What I'm running is the arpeggiator program uh, that Colin Cunningham wrote. And he recently made some additions to it, which are super cool, being able to hold these arpeggios. And then while that's playing, I can kind of set that down and twiddle the knobs on the synthesizer, which is always a lot of fun. So let's, uh, let's goof around with cut off a little. So you get the idea, that is a lot of fun to play around with classic synthesizers using the Trellis M4. Uh, and this one was programmed in Arduino. So we've got both uh, CircuitPython and Arduino examples running right now. Um, really quickly, one that I'm gonna, you won't see it on camera, but I've got, I'm gonna switch, speaking of cameras, let me switch these around a little bit. Um, I've got a uh, Trellis plugged into my iPad. And actually, let me pull this for a second. What I'm using is one of these little, uh, we call them camera connectors. It's like an on-the-go adapter that goes from USB over to the um, Apple connection there, where they call it lightning connector, right? Um, so what I've got on here is a, let me switch on over. I've got a synthesizer. I'll pull this, pull this off so you can see it. This is a little software synth. And one of the things I think is really fun is being mobile. So having a, um, iPad or an iPhone even, and a Trellis M4 allows you to have a control surface while you're on the go. So here I've launched this program called Audio Kit Synth 1. Let me go to Big O Vision for that again. There we go. And so here you can see I'm using the 
accelerometer that's on the board. We have that amazing analog devices ADXL 343 on there. And so I can use the um, accelerometer for modulation. And I can also use it for pitch bend. And let's switch to a, here we go. So you can do polyphonic stuff, playing multiple notes at once like this, or you can run arpeggiators here, or as we saw, we can run arpeggiators here. So there are a ton and ton and ton and ton of music projects you can do. Um, let's see, I'm gonna actually run over to my machine here for a second, because another really beautiful, elegant, simple little demo that I really dig is, let me power it up, this game. So it is also, it's not just for music, this is also a pretty cool uh, platform for games. So I'm gonna, switch to this view, and this is a game of Flappy Bird, believe it or not, by Davis Stells. And uh, what I'm gonna do is when it starts up, it gives me the choice to power it, or control it rather, with the accelerometer or the buttons. I'll just pick the buttons. And here we got our little flapping bird, and every time I press this button, it flaps. Oh, and there comes a wall, I better get up there. And let's see if another wall comes along, we'll, we'll crash into it just to see what happens, because that's a load of fun. Uh, but really impressive that this was there we go, written in uh, CircuitPython running on our Trellis M4. Uh, so that is another pretty cool demo showing something outside of the sound realm, although you probably have noticed by now I'm, I'm very enamored of doing synth projects. Um, let's see, some other projects I wanted to show. Um, how about just one more? Okay, this is another sound one, and this one is really uh, incredibly impressive to me because it is using the audio library that we ported from the PJRSA Teensy audio library. And uh, I'm gonna switch cameras again here for you. So let's go take a look at, I'm gonna steal power from one of these. You may have noticed I do have a lot of Trellis M4s here just to be able to work on these guides and demo stuff. Uh, and so here you can see I've, I've done some modification on this one. I added a little uh, extra case to the top. I have a little bit of wood uh, that I laser cut and laid on top of here. Um, so this one, let's see what's, what's this one coming through. Let's see. Audio cable, yes. A good sign. Okay, let me turn this up. There we go. Uh, so this one is using the audio library, like I said, and it is playing back samples. Uh, we have a row of samples in the top, and then we can uh, record samples using the little earbud microphone uh, in the bottom row. Uh, and so I can preview some drum sounds here. And then in a uh, typical sequencer, style, I can go ahead and lay in some beats here, switch the drum to a snare, and this one is pretty cool because we can, let me just throw in a, let me throw in a bunch of that, there we go. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get out of record mode, and in playback mode we can Do some cool beat repeats and stutters. And filters that again are accelerometer controlled. A little high pass, a little bit crusher. Uh, and we can change tempo, slow this way down. Uh, and do a hell heck of a lot more, but I don't want to take up too much more time demoing it. What I want you to do is put together your Trellis M4 and check out that project. Uh, speaking of checking out projects, let's jump right back over here and I want to show you the astonishingly massive uh, number of guides that we've got put together for you so that you can get started and learning and experimenting. So here is the Adabox 10 guide. You'll want to check this out in the Learn system on Adafruit. Uh, and what we have is our intro page, excuse me, then we have our unboxing page, and this will go through all the contents uh, with their descriptions and pictures of them that you can pour over as you enjoy uh, learning about all your components. 
And then we get into the main guide for the trellis. This is the sort of Uber guide that tells you everything you need to know about getting set up with Arduino IDE uh, or with CircuitPython, uh, dealing with the bootloader and resetting and all kinds of details. So definitely check out the Adafruit Neo Trellis M4 Express main guide. That's part of this. And all of these um, tabs I'm going to are links along the left side of the Adabox 10 guide. Uh, here we have that Trellis M4 Beat Sequencers project, and that shows the one I just demoed, as well as a CircuitPython one that's a simpler uh, four-track, but what you see is what you get, so it's really fun to play with. Uh, here we have the MIDI controller, and that's what I was using on my iPad there. Uh, the, um, uh, let's see, I'll, I'll jump to this in a second, but I'll say that the, one of the cool things about using the um, Trellis M4 plugged into a computer is that you can send MIDI, but you can also send HID, uh, which means keyboard commands. So we'll get to that in a second. Um, here is our arpeggiator that Colin wrote, and this one does both MIDI, so it can send out to hardware devices or software devices, and it has a built-in synthesizer, just like uh, that last project we demoed. Here is the foundation of what I just did with the little bits, and that instead was sending out to this little uh, kind of all-in-one modular hardware or semi-modular hardware synthesizer. Uh, and this is the first project that I show that has uh, the Stemma connector used to send out serial data. And that's sort of the, the foundation of uh, working with the Trellis and other hardware or other circuits is sending, um, in this case, serial commands over that little Stemma connector that we have built on there. So it is built to be uh, extended out into other projects. Now the synth design tool, this project, um, the guide just came out for this. I showed this last week on, the, um, on my workshop live stream. This is uh, adding on to that audio library that we forked from PJRC and showing how to use the audio system design tool. So let me, let me uh, just show you this image here. So this is a uh, drag and drop lines and boxes node-based um, tool to generate modules and patches for making your own synthesizers. So for example, taking an oscillator that makes a buzzing waveform and connecting up through an effect and a filter and then into a mixer, you can do that all inside of this tool, which is uh, really fun, really um, great if you like things like make code and you're uh, a visual designer. It's a great way to put together some of the patches and then copy that code, a little snippet out into Arduino IDE where you can continue the code and assign buttons to do certain things, or the accelerometer to change your filter, and so on. Speaking of filters, the um, hardware is also able to do uh, a lot of digital signal processing right on the chip. And so here we have a project that shows you how to do kind of two things. One is it is bringing in audio and um, visualizing it. So it's able to do fast Fourier transforms, or FFTs. And uh, this is a way for it to know what the... Um, different frequencies, uh, strengths are in different bands of frequencies, so it can display it uh, on, the, on the LEDs. And you can also uh, use different filters from that audio system design tool so that you can put low-pass filters and high-pass filters or even effects on it if you want. Uh, oh my gosh, still the music projects continue. This is a really cool one Davis Dells just did where we have a, a, a MIDI player built right onto the board so you can get MIDI uh, music files, kind of like a music score, and have them played back from samples right on the trellis. Okay, here's the first non-music one. So this one I'm addicted to, and I use this every day. Uh, it's uh, the trellis uh, launch deck. And so what I have is, this is launching applications for me, switching between tabs and browsers for me, doing volume control, play and pause. So that's a generalized sort of, uh, you see people with the 10 key uh, extenders on their keyboards. This is sort of like that, except I can program it to do anything I want inside of Circuit Python, and then it's communicating with different macro programs or just running system hotkeys like function keys. So, very cool project. Also, I'll say this is the one where I built the Ruiz Brothers uh, case. I 3D printed this um, Ninja Flex Cheetah case on it, so it's nice and soft on the edges when I lean my hand on that while I'm working. So, it's a really cool project. Um, check that one out. Here's that Flappy Bird game that we looked at. Can you believe how many projects we have for Adabox 10? It's bananas. 
this is a, I didn't demo this one, but this is a memory game. So you get to, just like turning over tiles in, in sort of an old-fashioned kids game, you get to press buttons and match up the colors until you win. Uh, here's another one from Davis Dells. This is a dice roller. So this is really cool. He's using this for role-playing games where you might have a monster come up and hit you and you've got to roll six uh D20s to figure out how bad the damage is. In this, you can say which type of die and how many and shake it, and then it'll calculate uh, a random roll for you and do all the math because, you know, sometimes playing RPGs, you're stuck doing a lot of math. Uh, here is, speaking of role playing games, Dave's uh, soundboard. So this launches into our soundboard category. These are really popular. We have um, the Christmas soundboard that I showed. We have this RPG game soundboard, so he's able to press a button and play atmospheric music and sounds. And then since we can mix audio, you don't have to stop one sound to start another one, and then he'll play a creaking door or an ax hitting a wall and those kinds of sound effects. So it's a very fun project. Um, here's our Christmas soundboard. And here's an ABC's soundboard that Mike Barella made. So this is uh, saying the uh, animals that are associated with the letters of the alphabet, like a children's book uh, or electronic toy. And there's also a Star Trek soundboard that'll play up some of your favorite Star Trek sounds. Uh, and since someone asked in the chat, where did I find the files for 3D printing this case? Well, there it is. It's actually the last guide that you'll see linked on the left side in the Adabox 10 main guide, and here are the files. This is the 3D printed bumper. There's a couple of styles, one with some cool punk rock collar studs around the side of it, like this purple one here, uh, or this plain one I did, and you want to print that in a flexible material. Um, and whew, so those are our guides. Now I wanted to uh, take a second before we go and see if anyone has any thoughts or questions over in the chat. And thank you all for coming out to our chats. We have people over on YouTube as well as on Discord. If you're joining us on Twitch or Facebook, hello. Uh, maybe some of our people are in those chats. I don't see them right now, but um, let's see. Let me, let me scroll through here and see if there are any specific questions. Um, so someone was asking about the audio library, I'm guessing, because I see Lady Ada is in there. Okay, the chat is in good hands, because Lady Ada and Mr. Lady Ada are in there answering questions. Um, someone was asking about the PJRC audio library, and Lady Ada says, yes, the, that library is great for chips with DSP support. So digital, digital signal processing support is built onto the at SAMD51 that we're using, so you're able to do things really fast. Um, I also want to say there are bunch of people to thank for all of the hard work that's gone into building this product, uh, as well as these guides and the projects around them and all of the code. So thank you to everyone on the CircuitPython teams. Thank you for the people at Adafruit who have um, done the port of the audio library. Uh, thank you to Phil B for doing some really crazy DMA NeoPixel stuff. So lighting up NeoPixels on these basically takes no memory. It's super fast and efficient. Um, yes, thank you to Paul Stoffergen for the audio library in the first place. It's an amazing uh, library that we're able to use on here. Um, and uh, let's see, any other questions that we can answer in here before we go? Let me know. Um, and if not, I'm going to go ahead and wrap that up. So I want to thank everyone for stopping by today. And thank you. Oh, there's two of me. That's freaky. Um, thank you so much for stopping by for the Adabox 10 Rainbow Trellis unboxing. And uh, please come by the chat, come into the forums, share your work. We're really excited to see the things that people create uh, with the Neo Trellis M4. And we sure are excited to keep on pushing on it and making new things with it ourselves. So uh, for all of us, at Adafruit Industries. I want to say thank you very much and have wonderful holidays if we don't see you before then and a great new year. Signing off for the Adabox unboxing for Adabox 10, I'm John Park for Adafruit Industries. Bye-bye.